Compressors are one of the most overbuilt, awesome parts of the HVAC system. It is the tank of the system, uh, especially these Copeland compressors. They're high quality compressors. They don't die, they are murdered. Something causes them to go bad because they are overbuilt. They don't just, oh, well, we're done and we're dead. They are murdered by some reason. So first we're gonna start off with compressor identification. This one is a reciprocating compressor because it's got pistons that go back and forth in a reciprocating action. You can always identify a reciprocating compressor because the suction line will usually be up towards the top and the discharge line will be at the bottom. So when you see the suction is above the discharge, it's probably gonna be a reciprocating compressor. These compressors have these little feet at the bottom and there's going to be rubber grommets there that keep this off the ground. It helps also absorb vibration from this compressor running and going into the unit or the ground or carrying into the house. But they are typically oval. Notice it's not a perfect round. It's oval kind of in shape. They're typically shorter and fatter. Um, this is where our plugs, electrical plug is going to go. This is a very special connection right here. Uh, also here we have another connection going from copper to steel and down here going from copper to steel. Some of these will even have a crankcase heater in it, but this particular model does not have that. So on the compressor, we're going to open this up so you can see it, but we'll talk first about the top. Tons of good information in these numbers up here. It gives you serial number, the type of refrigerant, the type of oil it came with, the voltage, uh, cross-reference numbers, especially the Copeland app has tons of information you can get off this compressor just by that number right there. Uh, they also have this nice little hook right here, and they make a tool called a compressor tote that hooks right in there. It helps you carry it around. I have one right here somewhere. We'll see if we can find it. So we take the top off of this compressor. The first thing we can see is this suction line. It goes straight into the housing of this compressor. So here's that suction line right here, and it just dumps in right here. So this whole entire casing is low pressure, low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor. Here's the back side of the electrical plug, the outside of the plug, the inside of the plug and on the inside of the plug this is where our other plug goes from the compressor we have three terminals here the same three terminals carry on so here's our main compressor all of this around this is going to be low pressure this is going to be our discharge line high temperature high pressure superheated vapor it is solidly connected to the pipe here we have to cut it to take it apart before I open this up here, we have a pressure relief valve. So if we end up with too much high pressure, there's a restriction that's really bad or whatever's happening where we have too much of a compression ratio, this will open. And it's very similar to a hot water heater dump valve or pressure relief valve, except this one's only vapor. So if the pressure gets too high or the pressure differential gets too high, this is forced open and it dumps the hot gas back into the suction gas side. What it'll usually do is cause it to trip on internal thermal overload, but it does relieve that pressure differential so it's not busting an actual valve. So next we're gonna pull this out so you can see what's happening. So the compressor itself, this is where all the weight is. The rest of this is just simply the very thin shell. But I wanna point out a few things here. One is we can see there's a spring here, that fit right here, and there's another spring over here that fit here. So this whole thing is mounted on springs as well as there's a groove in the top and then we even have another spring right here in the very top. So this whole thing is mounted on springs. So this compressor starts and stops or any of the vibrations from it running doesn't carry on to the rest of the system. Now the suction is going to be pulling in straight into this compressor from the housing. The whole entire thing is suction but the discharge line is hard piped. It's hard piped right here and notice how that pipe goes straight down to the very bottom then it comes over here and it loops down and it comes back up and then it loops down again and then it comes to the very side of this compressor. That is a very important design piece of this compressor. The oil is going to be at the bottom and if we have any low temperature, low pressure vapor, if there's any liquid with that, it's going to fall to the bottom. By having this discharge line, the hottest part of this line at the very bottom, it helps boil any of the refrigerant out of the oil and also keeps the oil viscosity in the right amount. So by having this line run down at the very bottom, it works like a crankcase heater. When Before we wanted to measure our discharge line over here to make sure we never exceeded 225 degrees Fahrenheit, that's because in here it's going to be much hotter and this running down in the oil will actually cause oil breakdown. The other thing I want to point out, not just that it runs in the bottom, but also this pipe has all these loops in it. Well, those loops are in there by design. Because this is on springs that it needs to move, by having all these extra bins allows this hard pipe to move around. 
So we can move this whole entire pipe around and it won't break any lines. If you ever look in automotives, the brake lines will be curved coming out for that same basic design. It allows the cab to move separate from the body and still have hard piped lines in there. So now that we got this part out of the way, let's take a little bit closer look at the rest of the compressor. And what I'm gonna do, instead of taking this one apart again, I have another one that we're gonna show. So at the very top, we'll take this piece off. And this is our electrical component. This is a rotating mag electromagnetic field. This is called the stator because it's stationary, but this is a very heavy part of this motor. So this is just a bunch of windings in here. But at the very top of this motor, we have this little piece right here. And this is gonna be an internal thermal overload. Once we get into electrical, you'll learn about that. Compressor diagnostics, we'll talk about this more. But that's what it looks like. It's on the very top of the compressor. Notice this is very far away from the outside shell of the compressor, separated by the springs. So if you try cooling this off with water, it actually takes a long time if you actually get the heat to this component because there's just a vapor gas of refrigerant separating the two. With that out of the way, we have our main valve plate or the head plate. This side is going to be suction. So it's just pulling suction gas from the very top. So if you notice, this kind of works like an accumulator. If there's any liquid refrigerant, the liquid refrigerant falls to the bottom, but this is actually pulling suction gas from the very top of the compressor. They're usually connected to somewhere this little top cap. And what it's doing is pulling that vapor across the motor so it helps cool the motor windings down. The other side we have here is our pressure relief valve, internal pressure relief valve. And then we have this canister right here. What this canister really is, is an internal muffler. So it allows all these pistons when they're discharging separately, those pistons discharge into this larger chamber and allows it to smooth the flow out before it then connects to the rest of our discharge line. So a lot of these reciprocating compressors had a muffler built into it. So this is our head plate. So we're discharging our gases out through here. And then we also have the suction plate where it's pulling the suction gas in. We'll get to those valves here a little bit so we showed this in an earlier video, but this is the rotor that rotates. So the magnetic field causes this to rotate. And as this rotate, it makes these pistons go up and down. These pistons moving back and forth is the reciprocating action. So you can see it goes down and up, down and up. That's that reciprocating action. This one, we have three different pistons. This is quite a large compressor. In the back, you can see the crank system happening. So these pistons are moving back and forth in that reciprocating action. That's why I call this a reciprocating compressor. Now this is still a hermetically sealed, which means this was welded together and we had to take it apart, but this is the reciprocating action inside. This is also full of steel, so it's a very heavy component. These compressors are the oldest style compressor that we've used. There is one drawback to this compressor. Let's look at just this piston here, for example. So this piston is what we would call top dead center at the very top. So imagine we were just coming up to a compression cycle. Now it's going to go back down. So we have all that gas compressed right here. Now, as we start to go down on the down cylinder side, that gas that we spent time compressing is now expanding back. So there's energy loss right there. Once we get to a certain point, now we'll actually open the suction valve and suck in a low pressure vapor. Then at the bottom side, it, we lose again a little bit before we actually come back up before we start compressing the gas for that valve to shut. So we're having efficiency loss right here and again at the very bottom. Every time it's changing direction, we're having an efficiency loss. So that's one of the things that makes these compressors very stout, very easy to understand, but the efficiency overall is fairly low because of that. Let's take a look at the valve plate. Now there's many different styles of valve plate. I'm gonna show you this particular one because it's the easiest to view. So in this valve plate, we have two different valves. There's one valve, this is called a reed valve. It's just a flat piece of metal. On the other side, I have valves facing the other direction. These don't have the reinforcements. So when the compressor is pulling down, these valves will open up. The, the pressure difference causes these to pull open. So this one opens and also this one opens as well. So these open, allowing the gas to pull in. This one on the other side is closed off. As we flip it over, these valves will be pulled closed. So as it's coming down this direction, these valves are being pulled closed, and these valves on both these sides, this valve is being pulled open and also pulled open. So it's pulling refrigerant in. 
when we get to the up cycle as we start pushing that gas back up these two then close off there we're pushing against them but there's nowhere for it to go as we're pushing that gas forward this one single cylinder opens up and it has a special piece of metal in the back to help protect it from breaking but this valve will open up opens up and let gas out, then it closes, opens up, lets gas out, then it closes, et cetera, et cetera. But you can see that there's two intake valves and one discharge valve, because the suction side's bigger, it's expanded, it's low pressure, and then we pump, we want it together, we want to combine all those refrigerant molecules together, we want that high pressure, so it pushes into a smaller pipe out. So we have two suction, sucks it in, then pumps it out. There's many different styles of valves, again, a lot of them now are circular valves, and these valves have a similar style design, but how they do it, they allow it to pump refrigerant out to the very center and they pull it into the very top. We have, instead of these long flat reed valves, they're actually using a circular valve here. There's two different valves on this head, which is really brilliant how it's made. I haven't figured out a way to cut these open to show how that system works, but it's essentially the same idea as this. One of these plates will open to the suction side. It sucks this valve plate open as this one is also being sucked open on the discharge side, then it pushes this one open in the opposite direction. All right, so that is the basics of our compressor. We have our pistons, that's our reciprocating action. We have valve plates that open and close. We suck in low pressure vapor. We pump out high pressure vapor. A muffler built in on it. We have a muffler built in on it. We usually have a pressure relief valve so if the pressure gets too high and if you hear this break it'll sound like water running or something hissing or even an air compressor where somebody opened the valve you just hear it really loud and it's just dumping that hot pressure gas back into the suction side uh, it's mounted on springs to absorb those vibrations um, as well as built-in crankcase heater and uh, that's pretty well the basics of it very simple in design